Welcome to the New Music Podcast. We've got your two regular jackoffs from upstate New York. My name is Patrick. And I'm Kyle. Yeah, let's fucking get it. We've got a uh, a new friend with us today. Welcome, Darian. It, how, hey. how should we introduce you? Because you've got so many projects, I feel wrong <laughs> picking one to be like, yeah, he's Darian from this project. Yeah, primarily my two main projects that I work on now, the other ones were just kind of projects that I uh, I was in. And then I was like, all right, cool. I'm done. Uh, uh, Zero Thalmia, which just dropped an EP, by the way, um, and is actually doing really good. And you, can despite you say my self conscious. Oh, the yeah. Zero Thalmia. So it does thaw. Yes, it does thaw. It has I hate thaw. you so fucking much. <laughs> yeah. And then the other one is Moon Presence for all you. Uh, uh, Bloodborne, Dark Souls fans. Yeah. Yes. yes. Both have merch. Uh, we dropped a single for Moon Presence a little while back. Uh, you can check that out if you like. But yeah, Links will those be are my two main things. And you're also streaming, right? I'm not. No, not right now. But I, not anymore. Like, no. I. I. Oh, okay. Do you mean like, uh, as a whole? Yes. <laughs> I do stream. You at still a stream DRD on Guns Twitch. Very often. Yes, I do. I very often. And that's um, primarily where I uh, know you from is from checking out your live streams. Uh, DRD Guts. Yes, 818, which weirdly enough was when I was uh, a more religious boy. 818 is for uh, Romans 818, which I can't even fucking remember what it is. But I, it's still catchy. I, I mean, remember I it. I respect it. I respect it. Guts is from Berserk, and then DRD is just my initials. Boom. I know, boom, big brain energy boomer. here. Big oh, Britain. <laughs> but thank yes. you for taking the time to come on to the, our, our stupid little show here. Thank you. Uh, we're going to have a good old time here. Now, those of you who frequent this show, which it's probably like five of you, but... <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. You guys know that we usually do voicemails when we have them, but if you want a chance to be on the show, the number to be on the show is 518-360-1134. We will laugh at whatever you have to say. We will play it. We don't care. Even if you're a wrong number, we will play it. Obviously. Obviously. Darlene, come back to me. It's been 84 years. I'm still <laughs> waiting, baby. We still need a but we still need to know about that fucking turtle still want to know did, did the turtle you know what next episode we will call her how about that okay. how about that we'll oh my god we'll get her on the phone as a, just like a brief funny thing um there's this number that's been calling me over and over and first it came as a text and was like brett why won't you answer me brett and i'm like yo is brett tell me you played <laughs> along she, oh i kind of did for a second i was oh. like well she i was like who is this and she's hey, like you know back. who this is are you kidding me and i'm like no, who is this? And she's like, Brett, seriously? And I'm like, I don't, I don't new phone, know who this is. <laughs> and new phone, who this? And I was like, okay. And I blocked her number. And then <laughs> she calls me several times. I'm like, I could, I didn't remember it was the same number or like something like that. And then I answer and she's like, finally, I'm not blocked anymore. And I was like, oh, what the fuck? What she's like, this? Brett, <laughs> why won't you talk to me? And I'm like, I, I'm not Brett. And she's like, you're lying. I'm like, no, no, I'm I'm not Brett. I don't know who this Brett is. Leave me alone. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, can you, uh, I'm not Brett. Go, go away. Okay. So <laughs> some serious like stalker ex-girlfriend energy for real, for so, real. Shout outs to whoever that dude, Brett. Shout, shout out, out to, Brett. Shout out to Brett. I hope you're dude. okay, my man. I hope you're Props okay. to you for finally, you know, getting a new number. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, if, if that happened to me, man, I'm telling you right now, I would have played along. I would have went deep on that shit to the point where, like, months down the line, we're still talking and, like, arguing about it. Yo. I would have played that game, man. I would have played that game. 
baby, I just, you know, I went out to get some cigarettes. I thought you were, yes, you know, I get thought you the knew, fuck like, out of here. I, I, I was going to get some milk the from message. the gas station. And, you know, it can sometimes take like five to 10 years. years. Both yeah. of you, shut the fuck up. I, <laughs> I, don't know All right. you. It's, I thought it's you got logistics. the message. I thought you got the message. Done. I'm sorry, babe. What are you doing tonight? I want to make it up to you. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm telling you right now. I would have said something like that. I would have definitely said like, "What? Well, what are you doing tonight? I'll swing I'm by. Done. I promise. I'll bring a bottle of Chardonnay. We'll make this up Yo. somehow. Oh I get a call God. tonight or whatever, and I just, I just let it go. I just completely <laughs> bail, and then I call her back the next Yo, morning. I'm telling you, man. I would have done this in months. Here. Man, have you guys ever worked in like call service or like no, customer service thank God. on the yes. phone? Man, have you ever had somebody who already called in super angry, but because of some power issues or stuff like that going on with like the system you use, um, you can still hear them, but they can't hear you anymore. And they were already like, I swear to God, if you hang up on me and <laughs> I could still hear them, but they can't hear me anymore. And they just start <laughs> loudly yelling your name in the phone. Only for it to slowly disconnect and fade into the void. Wait, wait, wait. Please, no. wh whoever you are, please keep going. Keep going. Please, keep going. <laughs> keep saying say my name. Say my name, bitch. I'm done. Oh, no. yes. Nah, man. Call call center stuff is a is a, a thrill for sure. Oh, yeah. If I customer service in general. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Uh, it, is, it is something else, man. I feel that for something. sure. But... Let us let us dive on into our first yes. segment here, which is uh, unreadable logos. Boom. Bet. All right, I'm ready for the challenge. Let's let's see these unreadable. We got logos. it last week. Last week we fucking guessed it. We knew what this was. Darian, what do you think this says? All right. I want to say. At first, it kind of looks like. I think it says disengage. Is that correct? Close. No. Very close. Is it disentomb? It is. Hey, it's disentomb. Uh, I, I we could emailed see the them. D we didn't get it, but, you know, or D I S E N, D I S E N T O M B. Yes, this tomb. Which uh, that fucking album art is fire. Yeah. Oh, all of it's fire. I fucks with it. Oh right. man, but that was last week's, and let's see who is the the lucky son of a bitch who got it right. Uh Stan Jackson sounds like a fake ass name right there. <laughs> Fat. Stan That's like the guy. Jackson. <laughs> Who do we put in this book? Stan Jackson. I like it. Stan Jackson. How many? How many bot emails do I have under the name Stan Jackson? Uh, correctly identified last week's logo as belonging to the band Disentomb. For his trouble, Stan wins a grab bag of metal goodies from Metal Sucks Mansion Archives. Mazel Tov, Stan. Fuck you, Metal Sucks. I love you, but fuck you. Oh my now, God. this week's logo what the is fuck? what in the fucking glitter scene fuck is this? What am I looking me... at here? Actually, let me... I think we can solve this. Hold on. Yeah, actually, I'm uh, reading it backwards. A-I-T-N. And it's actually yeah, going to make it easier. A-I-T-N-O. D-R-B... <laughs> it's something Dantia, I think. Dantia. Or something to that effect. <sighs> I think I can't tell if the third one is supposed to be a P, but I'm pretty sure. Bitcoin. Because <laughs> I swear to God, like we can all agree it's on the that's an R from back to bot to back to front is A I T N O D R B from the back A I it's not Abadonia because there's an or at least that looks like a T O D O D I think so I see an R after the D D O N TIA. Actually, I have a plan. Let me try something really quick. Oh, God. Do you think that first letter is two letters? Or like an H? That's kind of what I think it's an H, but what's what's messing with me is what the third one is. Yeah, the third one's like really fucked. Unless it's is it 
no, oh, that's it's definitely got to be a B for the the fourth one. Yes, it is. It's B R D O N T I A. It has to be. Oh, uh, mm, well, that's Prudentia. That's not right. See, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, you have the same idea. Um, I'm just gonna throw a couple of fucking letters. What in the actual fuck, the did, fuck did I just search? Yo, that might Hyper be it, Oh my god, we've solved definitely That's for sure. Look it. at this. Uh, it might be it. That sounds that, like a fucking this this yeah, kind go of back band to the that we picture. were talking about here. Go back to the picture. Not that. Oh god, not that. Oh god, That's, no. that's a bit much. For our, we should uh, have a a cringe warning. Like, like fucking. Oh, yeah, I like that's like what the trachnophobia or whatever. Shit. Hyper. I know Donsha. people are freaking out right now. Yo, submit that, my guy. Hyper. That means that this is supposed to be an E. That's a hyper. Wacky, but that's I mean, a it, fucking B, bro. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, I think it's, it's got to be a B. But I think that's it. I mean, most nine times well, out well, of ten. Look, I mean, look it up first. Look, look up first. Like, look up band. Oh, see if there's a band that. that's yeah. called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to YouTube. Oh, oh. it's definitely it right there. We solved, guys. We're putting it in. Oh, that's yeah, it. That's damn. it. Yo, we second weekend in row. Damn, baby. Let's go. They be slacking, though, because this one was pretty easy compared to some of the other ones we've done. Let's go. Right? Did I spell nice. that right? Oh, 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 hold on. Yeah. <laughs> now, here's the thing that fucks me up, all right? This don't look like no E. No. Absolutely. I, I can wait, see this, it. Wait, does their band name say it's with an E? Yeah. Or is it with an No, it's no, with it an O. It? Oh, oh no. that was fucking close. That E does not that look like an E though earlier. No, it's not an E. This is an O. 100%. Yeah, it's an o. no, I'm talking about the the one on the like left side. That yeah. shit don't look like an E. <laughs> no, fuck that. There you go. No, stop assuming I want to be in You the... almost, you fucking almost did it. <laughs> it did it the last time. It assumed that I wanted it. Bam. Bam, bam, bam. All is right, it guys. Oh, whoever God. does it first, or is it, oh, it's random. I guess I should do that real quick. Boom, boom, that boom. Sucks. Boom. That all sucks. That net. I think that's what it is, right? Yeah. Where do you find the logo thing? I search for unreadable. <laughs> unreadable. Got Un fucking readable like oh, no, no, no. my god I got I'm always down for merch oh yeah I wonder if there was somebody who immediately was like oh yeah I know exactly what that is oh, I, no, was, I, I guarantee you there that was all the goddamn time you guys want to hear it I guarantee you bro like somebody saw it and was like I know that band are you serious yeah 650 views they're like the best underground deathcore band ever <laughs> nexus of teeth yo we gotta hear at least a little bit of this I, I'm kind of curious of what they sound like, too. Oh, yes. Okay, I fucked with this. Why does this have 659 views in 2019? Uh, Look Whole at what it's from. Three. Is it from a... Oh, oh no. That is what? from the label. Wait, but if you go back on Google, there's one that says it's 41k views. But that yeah, might be I released saw through, like, Slam or something. Yeah, they've got they've got views, man. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. 16k here. This is an old band, old school death metal band from Denmark, Turkey. Members of Fern Fernalith or whatever. Damn, this, this is definitely fucks. a band to check out. That's sick. I like that design. Right I there. might actually do some a little research after. Hell yeah, I fucks with that. That was cool. Yeah, I, what I cool. like about that, this that segment sounded... is that sometimes you discover a really fucking cool band out of it, and you don't expect it. Because, I mean, well, if on, you get it, the fucking logo. Bam! All right, I submitted. Keyword, fellas. You get it. <laughs> he, he put it in, guys. He put it in. Watch you win. <laughs> <laughs> you win, right, even I... though we sent it first. You know what the worst thing was? I never win anything, and I literally joked about it on a, a Brand of Sacrifice stream, and I won on that stream. 
<laughs> and then I got I got that limited edition windbreaker, which I went ahead and traded for a uh, Osaya wall flag. Well, that's what um, you get because, well, yeah, no, because um, I know where this is I, going. Yeah, I I asked for like a two XL, and I was like, yeah, that should fit just fine. Where I get that bitch, and that bitch does not fucking fit in the slightest. Rip. I was like, do you guys have like any others or anything like that? And was it like, like too nah, big were, or too small? It was way too small, and maybe it was just because it was a windbreaker because it fit. It fit like windbreakers are like small. Windbreakers yeah. are small. Like I've I have one, one from so uh, like I have one from uh, Slipknot's last tour, quote unquote. Yeah. And it doesn't even look like it's a Slipknot anymore, but it was like super small, super small. Yeah. So rip my first and apparently only time I get a windbreaker. <laughs> but anyway, yes. Maybe but in any maybe. case, uh, yes. let us move on to the first uh, story that we have for this week, which is Doja Cat. Yeah, that's right. I said Doja Cat. We're talking ah, about yes. this bitch. Now, mind you, I don't know shit about this woman. Same. I don't. I don't. There's... But apparently, <laughs> there's a lot. There's some uh, conspiracy about supposedly she is ripping off Polythia. Well, <laughs> I don't know if it's necessarily her as much as it is the people that did the music with her for this yes. specific performance. Because somebody made a YouTube video, and you can actually find it um, if you just search, like, Polini Doja Cat. Somebody literally made a video that was like, huh, this sounds familiar. Oh, Polini, not uh, Polyphia. Oh, it's Polini, not Polyphia. Yeah. Which can you Polini blame me on for Twitter mixing them like, up? <laughs> Polini was like, <laughs> At first, he was, I don't know if he was as salty as much as he was just, so, like, surprised. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he wasn't surprised. Oh, my God. All right. So, first of all, I don't know if anybody here actually caught the performance. It is a really good performance. It sounds it really neat, but. I liked it. And I, because here's the thing. When I saw this performance, the first thought in my head was, we may finally have a new metal band or like a new metal core band with a female fronted uh, female vocals. And I'm like, oh, yes, please give me that. I'm all about that. Right. Because like that's the one thing that I feel like we don't have in this uh, genre or anything quite like it is female energy. Um, right. But the performance, everything from aesthetics to the sound was very tight. I fucked with it very hard. Very oh, hard. Yeah, definitely. I feel like Metal as a whole has kind of resurfaced itself in a more mainstream manner. You know, whether you look at that as this, uh, Ash right. Nico doing a metal cover version of her song Cry uh, with another metal band, uh, which I can't remember what the name of them are. But um, and then, you know, bands that are huge or not huge, but like bands that are huge in metal actually placing super fucking high in the billboards like Acacia Strain, like. It's just a it's just a different time now. It is. Things and are changing. The idea that we would still get mad when pop stars or <laughs> you know like oh, that doesn't surprise wants me. to cover Metallica <laughs> songs. No, like, it, it, that doesn't surprise me either. It's it, I don't know, man. I think we're we're beyond that where like genre restrictions shouldn't really be as big of a deal anymore. And I don't nope. think genre restrictions no, should it even really be a shouldn't. thing. I think we should just move on and accept the future. Yeah, that's why I, uh, nine times out of ten, I don't really get involved in much. But honestly, I listen to everything as a whole, except for like country music to some extent. But like, I just, I just don't play into like on any forums unless I'm just like, you're kind of acting dumb. Stop that. <laughs> I do. I go fucking yeah. hard. Yeah. No. I like, I hard. just, especially like lately vocalists arguing with each other gives me an aneurysm and i just am like that I can it's basically the same thing as a rat beef basically <laughs> yeah, essentially <laughs> you stole I my tunnel technique <laughs> oh my god man there are some there are some stories there's some petty stories bro like <laughs> But back to this story. So apparently uh, the song in question here is a song by Pliny called Handmade uh, Cities, which I've probably heard because I have all this shit this, on playlists. That, I think the like, section that name. specifically they talk about, I don't know if they mention it in the article, but it's, oh yeah, there you go, around 250. All right, so let's see here. The sample in Doja Cat's performance begins around 250. So let's get a little bit of that. First of all, 
this aesthetic is super super cool oh, i, yeah. I, oh, I yeah, couldn't definitely. stress it enough like that i really enjoyed this aesthetic Somebody well, said it reminded them of Evanescence. I was like, ah, I don't know about that one, Chief. But... Oh, because it's got a lady singer? <laughs> Damn, yeah. you clearly don't listen to enough female vocals. Oh. It's really funny. If you go on the actual <laughs> KMAC comments on it, and it's like, man, this uh, this Polini. <laughs> like, uh, just click different. on the... <laughs> Basically. Just it... cleans it in oh, yeah. different... <laughs> Came if you like, like Queenie so, so much, why didn't you, why say, didn't you say, so? say so? Yo! The meme king. Let's go. Let's K-Mac go. is just music donkey. Don't even... I'm <laughs> done, yo. I'm asleep. I love K-Mac, though. But uh, right. since we're, you know, talking about this uh, being ripped off, let's actually hear the... Shut up. Okay, that was pretty fucking oh, convincing. Wow. <laughs> Damn, I can't argue yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's why Pliny isn't surprised by that. Let's see here. <sighs> someone, <laughs> yeah, this... uh, someone tell Doja Cat that if she digs the arrangement of this at 250 onwards, then she would love my song, Handmade Cities. <laughs> That's the response. Yes, he did another one because uh, somebody from another band commented about, like, you shouldn't, you know, go on a witch hunt because of this. And he was like, yeah, that's cool. I'm just glad it was, you know, they they made it more popular. So. What I like about this is that it is also putting his music and just this style of, like, genty instrumental prog type shit in front of an audience that normally wouldn't have probably even heard of Pliny. So... It is exposure at the end of the day. As much as oh, yeah. I don't like to say it like that, it is. I mean, yeah. It, I just like his little find it absolutely hilarious. That's something I wrote four years ago in my bedroom found its way here. Boom, <laughs> right here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. My God, oh, that's man. Delightful. That's just delightful. <laughs> but yes. All right. What's <sighs> our, our next topic we got? Next up, we have Ticketmaster requiring proof the of a vaccination master. or negative COVID-19 test. It's a little early oh, yeah. to require a vaccination. Just going to come right out and say that. It's a little it's fucking a little early bit. for that. Yeah. Um, so Ticketmaster issued its statement indicating certain details of the Billboard report refer or, uh, referenced below were incorrect. You can read that here. Oh, this is an update on that. So why don't we go to that one? Because I don't want to be quoting misinformation at this point. So Clarifies COVID-19 vac uh, vaccine slash test policy at 2021 live events. A uh, billboard uh, report surfaced yesterday in uh, indicating that Ticketmaster, the live events, ticketing behemoth, whatever, um, would in 2021 begin using its mobile app to screen uh, entrance for records of a COVID-19 vaccine or recent negative test before allowing entry. Now, this is something that I... I support 100% mm -hmm. personally just this is just yeah. me I I would love to hear what you guys have to have to say about this but if you want live shows again I feel like this is the only way we are going to get this to happen Literally. oh people are already still doing them anyway which is dumb but no that is a fact shows yeah. are still mm -hmm. happening and we haven't yeah. talked about it much on this show because I don't want to shit on anyone specifically for doing it because 10 years down the line, we don't know what the world's going to look like. So I don't want to necessarily don't, we don't like even know like a day now. Like we don't know the next yeah, day. No I mean, we know that there probably won't on a more official standpoint, I guess, be shows happening until like 2022 maybe. At at the at the Late least worst 2021. 21. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look look at how many shows have been fucking rescheduled like two or three that doesn't tell you that it's probably not yeah. going to happen anytime soon i don't know what will and like and there's some venues that are taking good action on it like some venues i've seen are doing live stream sets which is something i've been like been on the soapbox of like hey i think it'd be really smart 
maybe it won't get as much as you know being live in person will get you but if you market it right just like if you market anything good and well, you what play did we say when right? suicide silence did it you know we 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 came right out and said like they mastered it they said oh, yeah. we're gonna go city to city we're gonna play live. yeah when dance Gavin dance did their whole live shit buy a fucking ticket to that shit yeah yeah like going city like, to city and they sold live stream to that city and that's yeah. it. Oh, you don't even have to do that technically. All you could do is just uh you know, because I think Dev Wars Prada, they already did it, at least one of them, but like they're doing like a show where they did with Roots Above Branches Below, and then they did a show that was like of, last uh, week. Was it last week? I thought it was just yesterday. Was it? I think so. Oh, oh. fuck no. Like, cause I had heard about it, but I didn't. Uh, know now that it. I reminded myself of it, I'm kind of irritated. Take it, fuck. I wish I had gotten it. Yeah, they're doing it. like their different discographies. Yeah, but like when Dance Cab and Dance did theirs, like they did merch specifically for that. They had their own website, uh, specifically for that. And obviously, you know, not everybody's on the same spectrum of like being able to do specific things. But right. it's like smaller taking those steps aren't gonna to be able to do this. But also, smaller bands can put on a thirty cap show. And it would be no different than what they went through pre-COVID. So, and I'm not trying to like shit on anybody, but like, let's be real. It's hard to sell tickets, especially when you're oh, just yeah. starting out. Oh yeah. Well, it definitely diminishes it. Cause like, yeah, for small bands, one of the big things that unless you're just a God at marketing on socials <laughs> and like you blow up through like a platform of like uh, fucking, if you were on slam worldwide or shit like that, you know, let's just say, for you example, just the right person on a feature or whatever. Yeah, but nine times out of ten, your exposure is going to come from like people who are actually there to go see the headliner. Mm -hmm. And if there's no headliners that are going to be coming that are worth seeing, kind of like destroys that whole point. Mm -hmm. Which is why I'm always now like I'm very much for like live stream stuff because they're actually is a band. Um, and I'm not gonna anything or anything like that, but like they did play. We actually got offered to play that same venue for a show, I think, uh, recently, and we turned it down because COVID. <laughs> and the it might not have been as bad, but they put a picture with like everybody not having a mask on, all grouped together, and I was like, oh, oh no, yeah. And so uh -huh. like it, it, you basically just committed PR suicide, essentially. Which sucks, but the thing but is, like, is that's that the... like I do feel that like I agree with you to a certain point, but I do feel like the internet will forget that kind of thing. Oh yeah, especially for small bands, unless they did like a horrible ass crime. I mean, they're probably not going to remember it unless the person or band is really shitty in response. Well, I think then the one that instance where that's kind of fucked up i mean there's two actually i mean steel panther did their live oh, stream their, their live shows and people actually caught covid um yeah damn, Boom <laughs> Kitty wants to just be like the fucking star of the show yeah that's i'm when people like i don't know like i just don't understand like the idea of uh trying to you know mitigate or however you want to phrase it you know handling a group of people who are going to be very willing to go see a show because they haven't seen one in a while when you also have people who just no matter what even if they wear a mask for two seconds the moment they get in those doors they're not gonna fucking wear them Fuck yeah. no. like i don't understand how you're gonna try and tell me we'll keep it on low capacity so does that just mean like that means that 10 people are going to catch COVID. How are you going to not keep them together? There's no yeah, way you're no, going to force that. that. Like, Exactly. Like, no matter what, then there's either going to be a chance that maybe somebody's going to catch COVID unless you do those screen testings, which I do agree. I think they would be necessary. I think the matter that would be kind of difficult, which it looks like from what I'm reading on the thing, it says there's like a testing planning phase. Um, now, to that, actually but... like represent the actual facts of what Ticketmaster wants to do, um, their clarification statement reads as it was uh, widely misreported yesterday that, and this obviously is way after the fact, so um, take that with a grain of salt, but that mm -hmm. Ticketmaster will require will be requiring vaccine uh, status 
slash test results for future events. This is not true. Ticketmaster does not have the power to set policies around safety slash entry requirements, which would include vaccines and or testing protocols. That is up to the discretion of the event organizer. We are indeed exploring these options, but it is still only a potential concept and Ticketmaster will only be able to require such parameters. It would only, it will always be up to the event organizer. What I think um, will wind up happening from this is that you um, will need to provide proof that you were tested uh, yeah. negative recently, like within 24 or 48 hours or something before entry mm -hmm. if you want Wait. to go in unmasked. Or you just test right then and there. That yeah, but I that sounds like a lot yet, of. Oh no, I'm not saying yeah. like it's it's the perfect plan. I'm Can just you saying, imagine like, security being like, "Yo, we gonna test for COVID right here. Yeah. I'm gonna stick this fucking Q-tip all the way down your nose. <laughs> Hold still." <laughs> well, the and same... the difficult thing to really think about that is like, why the fuck are they gonna pull? I mean, I guess they could hire some like nurses or some shit, but like yeah. nine times out of ten. The, the main focus is kind of just on people as a whole because this is affecting people's jobs. This is affecting, like, you know, and obviously touring and stuff like that is for it's some for some people, that is their career. <clears throat> but I'm not going to try and pull away people who, right. you know, are working at, like, clinics, stuff like that. Like, are you going to go out of your way? <laughs> maybe as a venue owner that's working through Ticketmaster to hire maybe, like, a registered nurse for that. And if so, then are you going to like pay them pretty good? Right. Because that's taking away from, you know, what they could okay. also be doing at wherever they normally are. You know, it's just a Actually lot to think about. In an important job field, given the current, you know, climate of the world. So like, yeah, I, 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 I would feel guilty being like, yo, we want to put on. I want to like, go see Slayer. So, um. <laughs> Don't say that. I'm still salty that that band's <laughs> broken up. <laughs> but still, but still, could you imagine being like, yo, I want to check out these 10 bands that like I just discovered yesterday. But um, yeah, so we just need to like hire you on to like do some testing. But like there are people actually dying in the hospital. I got to yeah. go treat those people. Exactly. No, we need to put on a show. Oh, so entertainment's more important than actual lives. That's the argument that winds up being had here. Yeah, for sure. Because, like, at the end of the day, yeah, you can, you know, because it is true that, like, touring and music is, like, some people's careers, and that's fine. But the argument there you can have is that from whether it's a bigger budget to not as big as a budget, there have been people, there have been venues that have been doing, like, live streaming stuff. There have been doing some well, exclusive like merch for specific things to where, you know, it's never going to happen again or stuff like that. To where they try to entice you to, you know, be able to support them and you still get something out of it, whether that's getting to see them, uh, you know, do a whole live set where you get super, super exclusive merch you'll never see again. Um, but everything throughout this whole pandemic, for especially for musicians right now, you know, at least from the spectrum I could see because that's where I'm at. Um, I'm going to say right now that like those COVID shirts, air. like all the shirts that are like being made for these these exclusive live streams now. 10 years from now, that shit's going to be very, very it's... valuable. Oh, 100%. There's oh, going to yeah. be not only a nostalgia, um, you know, value to it for the people who went through it, but the people that don't know or were too young to understand what was going on during this time period, they're going to be like, oh, that's a part of history. So, like, you know, yeah. it's going to be a totally different story down the line. Oh, yeah. I have Edgar Allan Poe's <clears throat> candle from during the Red Plague era. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. But I do think that in the future, we'll see a little bit of a mix of both. We could see live streamed actual shows like as it's happening in the future. I think that's something that could very well happen. Yeah. That's just personally, that's just what I see having to happen. Yeah. I mean, because how else are you going to? I I mean, from what I've talked to some people, they've said that low capacity shows have meant they sat in chairs. And I'm like, that sounds fucking awful. Yeah. Why would I want to go? It's like when people go to Rocklahoma, like, I guess, like, you know, obviously there's like older people there and that's fine. But like, 
for the whole festival, you're going to tell me that I need to just sit the whole time? Nah. Which, I mean, there were stages that you could stand at, but, like, people would get mad at you if you, like, stood up and stuff like that. Like, it's just... (laughs) It's just one of those things, like, you you go to a concert nine times out of ten to, like... For an experience. You're paying for In a really simple sense, you just vibe. And you can't really vibe as well, especially in a metal, if you're just sitting down. Maybe you can, but a majority of people can't. Hence this whole... Everybody feels like the need to like, oh my god, I gotta get back to a fucking show. It's a release for a lot of people. I what I do is I meditate to, I as thought, I lay dying. <laughs> I thought you were, <laughs> I thought you were about to say I uh I masturbate. I do as that I too. lay dying. I do. What I do is I create a sigil. I create my intention right there and then I jizz all over. There. But do you Boom. premeditate it? it into reality? I am going to be the new singer of As I Lay Dying. Do you, uh, but do you premeditate it? I, I pre masturbate. <laughs> Damn it. I don't know if you got it, but it's okay. I'll leave it at that. Pre? Nah. <laughs> well, Jokes okay. aside. Explain the joke because I'm a dumbass. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> uh, a Tim Lambesis. That's, that's oh, uh, oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, there we go. So, too many layers. Too many. Like, that was a good one. What are we, an ogre? Yeah, there we go ogres have layers baby no Shouldn't i mean that is such that is still such a topic like i honestly still don't know how to really feel about it i'll tell you how i feel about it all right tell me what you tell me what you think the way i feel about tim Lembesis is that he is at least making an effort to make amends and to fix everything he did wrong and i appreciate uh, yeah. and respect that but you have people mm. out there like yeah. CJ McCreary and Greg Gilbert oh, who are going to make excuses and play the victim or, you know, this bitch is crazy or, you know, they don't take any ownership. Tim Lambesis, yeah, he he lied about it at first, but now that he's been, you know, he paid it, he did his time. Now that he's back and he's actually back in the band, I think that, first of all, is a big step. The fact that the rest of the band let him back in was a big step he's every show Mm -hmm. everything is about repairing the damage and i respect that Mm -hmm. for sure i think my issue wasn't necessarily i mean initially when i first heard about it i mean obviously my issue kind of was with him but you know when he came back i think my issue more so and even before then just a little bit was just the fan base (laughs) because man they'll say some yeah man i would have I would have done that to my wife too. If I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh god. I mean, okay. If we're talking about subreddit, like r slash deathcore, oh you know, like let's let's be real. These guys are the salt of the fucking earth. Fuck those guys. If he makes a gurgle, I will die for him. <laughs> he did, he's my favorite gurgly. He, he boy. makes bur noise. I <laughs> I die for him. Jesus Christ. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Jesus Our Christ. Next topic brings back the whole thing about COVID 19 and the idea of ah, vaccines. Yes. Now, for those of you who may or may not have already heard, Deftones Stephen Carpenter <laughs> is a flat earther. Oh, he Jesus believes Christ. that vaccines don't work. He's anti vax, anti fucking. Uh, I guess what what I guess we're um a human being. I don't fucking know anymore. But let me tell you, all right, I listened to this podcast so you <laughs> didn't have to. An hour and a half of listening to conspiratorial type people on a podcast called The Tin Foil Hat. What more do you need to know? That's literally all you needed to tell me and I don't have to listen to it. Now, this man probably you? watches the movies with crazy conspiracy people and is just like, I feel, I understand you. Who the fuck is that one guy that's like, uh, I don't like putting chemicals in the water and they turn the freaking frogs gay. Oh, I Alex guarantee- Jones. Alex yeah. Jones. Alex Jones. Bruh. I guarantee you he uh, listens to that. I mean, can stop. Look, oh, Alex probably. Jones, say what you want about the man. He probably is somewhere around 50, 60, 50 percent, 60 or 40, 60, sorry, 40, 60 on, you know, bullshit and facts i just think he's an idiot the man called a lot of <laughs> he's a things. lovable idiot though that's why we love him say what you want man the guy you know he sits behind all of this he reads all that shit and like he definitely knew about um 
Jeffrey Epstein before any of us did. He was uh, right yes. about a lot of shit. I'm not, I don't, I, I'm not here to defend Alex Jones. That's not the point of this. But the point that I'm making here is that it is pretty shocking to find out that Deftones guitar player thinks that if you think we live on a spinning flying space ball, you're in a cult. That is a very oddly specific. We don't even to have to go further. Like just that. <laughs> And he said this like eight or nine times. You know, I want to say I'm surprised, bro. but honestly, man, people are just st- <laughs> people are crazy. Like, oh people are God, wild. Dude. People now, like are to come wild. to this conclusion that the Earth is flat is a very tough dilemma to get over, and the the whole truther movement is very interesting. Like when you listen to people that talk about this type of shit, and and like I've been around plenty of flat earthers. I've got we have flat them earthers as a whole. Both of us have. We worked with one. I know. Oh, and, no. But outside of just that experience, I've known plenty of flat earthers in my life, and they're not idiots most of the time. I just think that they have this preconceived notion that the truth is not being given to us. And I mean, there is some truth to what these guys say. I mean, almost every image that we have seen from space has a, a little, little fine print, little piece of fine print at the bottom corner or whatever that says this was photoshopped. Yeah, we get it. Because they can't, the technology isn't there yet. I believe that. But the idea that the earth is flat, this guy, this man doesn't cling to one specific flat earth theory. And there are several. There are several. There is an idea that the earth, that the universe as we know is a fucking prism. I like that one. That one's really funny as shit. (laughs) Jeez. But this man says a lot in this podcast, man. Um, Stephen Carpenter has uh, some serious doubts about the reality we live in. The Deftones guitarist recently revealed his controversial thoughts on the world. It's flat. Vaccines, they don't work. And COVID-19, totally overblown. Sure. Now, but all right. What is their explanation for gravity? Oh, that it doesn't <laughs> exist? Is that is that what I'm... <sighs> I really fucking wish that I had a good answer for you. All they can tell you, they can't point to a single actual, and like the, and the argument they have for the most part is we're working on it. But what we know for a fact Fuck is that this is here. bullshit. So, uh, yes, we'll I know it's wrong. I don't know how, but I do in my big brain. I know, I know it is wrong. I don't want to continue with this fucking story. I don't even want to continue. <laughs> oh yeah. Here is a direct quote right here. In the simplest terms, from my perspective with Flat Earth, is simply, I know we're not on a spinning, flying space ball, he said. Now, what it actually is and all that, uh, to what depth it goes to, that's still be still to be discovered, and people are working on those things. So, like I said, I don't have the answers for you. I just know what the what's bullshit, <laughs> and I know that we're being lied to. Um, he oh added, God. "It. I mean, if you... I mean, if you're walking on a treadmill half a mile per hour and I unplugged it, you would feel it. That's called well, momentum, bitch. Yeah, th- that's called basic science, you fucking idiot. Oh if you God. turn something off that's moving, According it stops. To him, we never beat polio. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Carpenter and Tripoli also discussed vaccinations with the former asserting that there's never been one single vaccine that's ever worked. Get the fuck out of here, This is man. probably the same type of dude that believe, hey, I'm going to stick all these kids together in here with, like, terrible ass diseases and uh, hope for the best. You get them, little Johnny. I'm, I'm well, already done with this article. Like, you remember I, I, herd I immunity go fest? This. Isn't that, didn't, like, a governor or something <laughs> st- stick his kids or something in there? Like a room or some uh, shit? I'm I done. No I don't even want to go through with this. Like this uh, is just the hurts stupidity. My, hurts now, my brain, dude. My final... like, I mean, I will give it to them. They these people, conspiracy theorists, will get they have the mental capacity to like do this shit. I'll give them that. Oh, yeah. Fuck, they have they have enough like of a like mindedness to make a fucking convention. I'll give them that. A hundred percent. But uh, but so... but we're also talking about a uh you know exactly. a movement of people. Where exactly. they, on, 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 the, on the Flat Earth uh, Society, um, I believe it's their website, they says, um, with like 1 million um, followers around the globe, like, 
These are the same <laughs> you people said that would write that type bro. of shit. Yeah. That uh, would write yeah, that that's... shit. And obviously there's uh, the, oh, it's a joke, motherfuckers. Like, oh. Yeah, right? sure. You guys got a sense mm-hmm. of humor? Because whenever we talk about the Earth being a fucking globe, apparently we are globe tards or whatever you want to call us. I don't know, man. These... I don't know, man. But the last the last argument that he makes um, regarding COVID-19 is that wouldn't Uh-oh. the homeless population be all that you need to know about the virus? I mean, if there was this incredibly <laughs> deadly, deadly virus going around for this whole entire year, we would have lost everybody in the street by now. That's, that's, that's not bullshit. true. That's, that's not works. true. That's not how any of this works. That's now, not how any of that works. Yeah. Clearly, people have died. I'm sure there oh, are yes. plenty of people on the streets who have died from COVID 19. But given how many uh, businesses have shut down, I'm sure there are some people who are out of work and got evicted. Yeah. Yeah. I actually know the eviction thing is a little different now because of COVID. I know that, but it wasn't that way at first, man. Oh, no, no, no. Absolutely not. Now, like I said before, well, the problem is because there's loopholes in evictions. That's the problem. So it's called uh, waking up from the matrix with Deftones because they do talk about the idea of living in a simulation, which I think is a fascinating conspiracy. But like I and I do agree with Joe Rogan on this. It's not fun if you take the conspiracy seriously. Like, yeah, you just you got to entertain it. But not, but like, put it out of your mind once it's done. You gotta walk away from it. Fan fiction's fan fiction for a reason. It's not there the actual go. show. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> it's real life fanfic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm writing a fan fiction about the Earth being flat. And uh, for all of you guys who want to know what doing research, doing your own research means, it's literally just doing this. There you go. I've done my own research. I went to YouTube versus science. Oh, I'll have to watch. That sounds like it'll be a fun damn. Look, <laughs> guys, I was just about to say that. I I have uh, known many flat earthers who have sent me videos to try to convince me that the earth is flat. I can forward you those videos if you want. I think they're highly entertaining, but I don't take them seriously. So we can have that discussion. I'm open to it. I love hearing other people's ideas and shit, but I'm not going to bore my actual audience with this dribble so let's let's carry on shall we yeah. <laughs> um but we are gonna bore you with some other dribble uh black veil brides dropped the song yes they did scarlet cross now when i saw this i thought okay i feel really betrayed by the fact that he dyed his hair oh. blonde yeah I was to- yo i was disrespected by that too i'm not even gonna lie so do we call him andy blonde now Yo, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm blonde. Andy blonde. Yo, See, on a like, weird note, Danny Elfman released music through Epitaph. Oh my god. Wait, what? Yeah, Danny Elfman, like Jack Skellington, his... has a song recently that is on Epitaph Records. And it he says motherfucker in it. Now here's the thing about yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Danny it's Elfman signed to... video. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Black Veil Brides, I got nothing against you, but we are about to check this out because I'm far <laughs> more interested in that. Now, here's the thing about Danny Elfman, all right? He had a ska band before he started doing any of the... He had a ska uh, band? Bro, I'm yeah. about to invest myself. Yeah, dude. Okay, so if you want to get an idea for what Danny Elfman's ska band sounded like, it was like, okay, do you remember um, <sighs> Corpse, Corpse, Corpse Ride? Yes. Do you remember the song in the middle with all the skeletons? Yeah. Is that- <laughs> That's him singing. Oh, jeez. That's him Spooky singing. Scary Is Oingo Boingo the name of that band? I don't remember. I don't, but I just, ah, man, we'll have to check this out later. But dude, I have got to know about this project. This is, this is fucking fascinating. It's some weird ass, like surreal 3d. (laughs) You're, you're just going to have a time, my man. 
All right. So this is Happy by Danny Elfman, now signed to Epitaph, which I'm um, thank you, Darian, for letting me know. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're welcome. I just remembered that and I was like, oh, yeah, that'll be. Oh, it is a, it's a trip. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did you hear that? Da-na-na-na. Tell me that's not the Adams family. Yeah, family. Hold the fuck up. Dude, we're three seconds in and I'm already calling plagiarism. <laughs> let's hear it though. Let let let's actually hear it. Well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, dude's trippy. I'm so Excuse me? I don't like this. I don't oh, yeah, want... no, keep going, fellas. I don't Just like keep this. On. Keep on We're going. 16 seconds in and I don't want it anymore. I'm so happy. Jack Skeleton hits different. Happy. I'm so happy. Happy. Everything is crumbling. Bruh. I don't like this. <laughs> Bruh. I don't like this at all. Is anybody else's anxiety up? Poison. <laughs> yep. Poison. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we need to see that part again. No, we don't. Yes, we do. <laughs> no, we fucking don't. Boo Boo Kitty, why you leave? Poison. <laughs> Poison. Yo, that straight up looked like the doll from Dead Silence. Yeah, I would say so. Or Night of the Lemming uh, Dummy. That too. They're both very similar dolls. Holy shit. I am a minute and 16 in. Can we please? <laughs> Hold on. We have to keep this going because you. <laughs> oh, no. You got to oh, yeah, you. skip around. <clears throat> yeah. Choose your poison, baby. Poison. Poison. Choose your poison. Poison. This is so fucking weird. Everything is shutting down. Everything is shutting down. Everything is shutting down. Yo. Poison. Poison. Happy, 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 happy. Wait, it gets fucking intense. You're gonna tell me it gets more intense than this? This looks oh, like a bad yeah. acid trip. Oh shit! This is already just... like we're halfway there. All right, we are halfway, and this is a bad acid trip. Oh, buddy, just wait. And hey, you're more. almost. You're almost there.
is he saying puppy fuckers? Yeah, he is. Is he seriously saying puppy yeah. fuckers? <laughs> yeah. This motherfucking man. <laughs> oh that is God. exactly what he is saying. How you feeling, Kyle? Just end the fucking video, please. <laughs> We're going to finish it. You think you can do this? I want you to send me... Just fucking play it. I don't have enough alcohol for this. Life is a dream, so pretty and pink. Youth is wasted on the mother, youth is youth is wasted on the mother, youth is wasted on the motherfucking wasted on the motherfucking youth. I'm so happy. happy. <laughs> Bruh. There you go. You made it. You survived, Kyle. Proud of you. I was about to walk out if that was any longer. Like, I'm now, dead ass. I'm not going to have us watch this because it's six and a half hours long. But if you ever want the most intense musical experience of your entire life, probably. I am still yet to do this, but I plan on doing it. There's a thing called Everywhere at the End of Time. If you haven't heard of it, it's a project done by this guy called The Caretaker. And it's to give you kind of a look through the lens of what it feels like to be somebody who has dementia, but it's through music and like so, people like report having like real intense, like, like emotions after listening to all six and a half hours of it. So Definitely what you described sounds a lot like, um, in a less musical sense, but in yes. the, you know, like Netflix idea of it, but the Stephen King, um, the castle. Yeah. The castle yeah, rock, yeah. castle rock. That was fucking fascinating. And I don't know, man, as, as it is, man, that shit was highly entertaining for me personally. Yeah. This is just like, if you feel like you can emotionally mentally handle it, um, you can give it a try. You can find it on YouTube. Uh, I think it has a band camp. But yeah, everywhere at the end of time. Just if you ever want it to. I would not recommend doing drugs to it, though. 100% uh, would not recommend doing drugs to it. Uh, like, I don't even know what drug you would want to do that to, especially knowing that it's six hours long. I feel like, what's the point? Yeah, because it's an ambient experience. But the listener discretion advice for anybody out there. I just discovered it recently. Um, through the power of YouTube recommendation, apparently, and it blew back up again. So I looked into it, watched a guy like talk about it, and I was like, okay. And I started watching or listening to like the first part of it. It's something. It will fuck you up. What's up? Did you not at least attempt to introduce it mm -hmm. by like 10 30? Mm -hmm. I mean, okie dokie. I love you. But yeah. So, what song are we going to watch ne or uh, check out next? Because <laughs> I don't even want to continue. You, are anymore. you guys mentally like, okay? I, I don't even want to continue with this I, episode I don't think anymore. We have I'm to. not going to lie. I think that's a great place to end it off. <laughs> like, honestly. I, I'm dead guys, ass. Like, I don't even want to. I, I can I can put a playlist together of shit. Like, I already have a playlist, a November mm. Spotify playlist. We, we do playlists every month. November 2020's playlist is being worked on right now, but I'll tell you right now that the new Black Veil Bride song is on there, the new Wage War, the new uh, Downfall of Mankind, and Ocean's Date Alaska. All of those new songs are up as long as well as many others. 
most of those bands are unheard of and that is what you come to us for right i fucking hope hopefully i fucking hope you don't want to just hear about the same 25 bands over and over again no i just want to hear danny elfman every time dude i after watching that i want to (laughs) know what else this man has um going on because that was fucking fascinating to me all right (laughs) i know you don't you didn't like that at all but i was fucking hooked um, looking now, it looks like the video for it was directed by an Aaron Johnson. So anybody who um, has watched that and thought, damn, I want that guy to make my next fucking lyric video, music video, whatever. Hit this motherfucking guy up. Aaron Johnson. Art direction by Barrett Gwendolyn Gilma. Huh. Holy shit, though. And I would expect... Danny Elfman to write good music. That's what I know for a fact is that he is a damn good songwriter. Yeah, I mean, if but... any Tim Burton film hasn't convinced you that Danny Elfman is a musical genius, I don't know what to tell you. Man, Nightmare Before Christmas has a weird history around it, though. Like, like um, there was a lot of, I think, backlash back and forth between Burton and I think Danny Elfman as well as like just a bunch of other things but you can watch youtube videos on that mm-hmm. but apparently there was a lot of a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes i believe that yeah i believe yeah. that for a fact and and tim burton especially recently with you know being um wanting want, people wanting to cancel him for not having people of color in his movies oh uh, yeah I mean, that's bullshit because I've definitely seen people of color in his movies, but he definitely favors white people. To say that he doesn't would be kind of a fucking lie. Yeah, <laughs> so. definitely. But, yes, we have we have reached the end of the road. We have definitely um, reached it. So, guys, yeah. if, if you've made it this far, you know what to do. Obviously, you like, you comment, you subscribe, and you do all the cool-ass shit. Kyle, what the fuck are they doing to that bell button? You crowd kill the shit out of it. <laughs> try you motherfucking you crowd kill that shit exactly yeah. yeah yeah this way you get notifications you know when we uh upload and all the cool shit because you want to know you want to know what's going on with us you want to know everything that we're doing no you don't <laughs> no, I'll, uh, uh, I'll give you next a, video is going to be next video is going to be direct links to that jared dines only fans account because oh, I have the Christ. exclusive on that shit. So, yeah, I'm just going to say there's a lot of foot stuff and a lot of Stevie T dressing and drag. So if you like the sound of that, tune in next week. We'll uh, have plenty of that. That sounds beautiful. Yeah. And um, I'm sure he'll be shitting on um, Lucas Man for playing or uh, fucking him in <laughs> halftime. Yeah, I'm done. Fucking him in halftime. It's like, oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Mm. making sure every individual pump anyway you guys know what to do like comment subscribe follow us on instagram facebook the facebook group all that good shit what else am i missing kyle i think you're good and crowd kill the bell button obviously now links are in the description if you want to check out darian's music as you should now please spell it out for them tell them how to Uh, find your band all right so right uh, the spelling is X E R O P H T H A L M I A. You had to think about it. Wait, hold on. I can't remember if there's two L's or one. Darian, how do you can you use that in a sentence? Oh yeah, it's only one. I spelled it right. Cool. Uh, Xerophthalmia is actually an eye disease. It's eye uh, deficiency, like dryness. Dry it's a vitamin eyes. deficiency. You've probably heard that a million times, though. Fuck yeah. off. Dry eyes. Yeah, yeah, dry you eyes. have xerophthalmia. Yeah, and xerophthalmia. then moon presence is, again, just bloodborne. Uh, so if you like those type of games, hey, check out that. Check out hey. that band. But no, and yeah, check like out the EP Twitch. that just dropped. Yes. Oh, yes. That's right. I yeah. meant to tell you, by the way, my favorite song off of that EP was War. That's you know you're the second person to tell me that I fuck with that one and the only song I didn't like was the intro song I just felt like that one didn't hype me up like I felt like it was supposed to but not to say that there was anything wrong with it I just didn't I didn't vibe with that song I felt like the rest of the album is a solid seven out of ten with the hey. exception of war being like a nine I really fucked with war 
So there's that. Well, hey, I appreciate it. Uh, I plan on making all my future material. I can't fucking speak. Uh, <laughs> way more intense. <laughs> that only goes up from here. But yeah, no, I'm really glad that you took a listen to it. And if anybody else wants to, the EP stream is still on Slam Worldwide, um, as Dude. well as it's all out on like streaming platforms. So all check out, it out for Harambe. Of course, Dick. So <laughs> always, not always. Uh, I, away. I haven't been wearing pants for this whole podcast, so I mean, same. I'm lying. I've been wearing oh, shorts. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm lying. I got the tightest blue jeans in my whole wardrobe on right now. Yo, that was me today at work. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh man, but you, you guys, I don't know why you're still here. What are you doing? Get to the what next. Get to video. the next episode. You fuck the next one you and then and another one another one DJ Kelly <laughs>